Then Holofernes became joyous from the drinking. He laughed and grew vociferous, roared and clamored. Arrogant and excited by mead, he frequently admonished the guests that they enjoy themselves well. So for the entire day, the wicked one drenched his retainers with wine until they lay unconscious. The whole of his troop were as drunk as if they had been struck down in death. So the men's lord commanded the guests to be served until night approached. Then, corrupted by evil, he commanded that the blessed maiden should be hastily fetched, brought to his bed, decorated with bracelets, adorned with rings. The retainers quickly did as their lord commanded. They stepped into the tumult of the guest hall where they found the wise Judith and quickly brought the illustrious maiden to the lofty tent where Holofernes, hated by the savior, rested himself at night. There was a beautiful all gold fly net the commander had hung around the bed so that he could look through onto each of the men that came in there, but not one could look on him, not unless he commanded one of his men to come nearer to him for secret consultation. They quickly brought to bed the prudent woman, then went to inform their lord that the holy maiden waited for him in his tent. Holofernes became happy in his mind. He intended to violate this bright woman with defilement and with sin. The judge of glory, the majestic guardian, the lord, ruler of hosts, would not consent to that, and he prevented him from that thing. Then the diabolical one, this wicked and wanton man, went with a troop of men to find his bed where he would lose his life. The mighty man fell into the middle of the bed, so drunk with wine he possessed no sense in his mind. The savior's glorious handmaiden was very mindful of how she could deprive the terrible one of life most easily before the impure and foul one awoke. The creator's maiden with her braided locks took a sharp sword, a hard weapon in the storm of battle and drew it from the sheath with her right hand. She then began to call the guardian of heaven by name and said these words aloud, Lord of creation, I beseech you for your mercy on me in my time of need. My heart is intensely inflamed within me now and my mind is troubled, greatly afflicted with sorrows. Give me, Lord of heaven, victory and true belief that I might cut down this bestower of torment with this sword. Avenge now that which is so grievous in my mind, so fervent in my heart. Then the highest judge inspired her immediately with great zeal, as he does to each of the dwellers on earth who seek help from him with reason and with true faith. Then she felt relief in her mind. She grabbed the heathen man securely by his hair, pulled his head towards her with her hands, and skillfully placed the wicked and loathsome man so she could most easily manage him. Then the woman with the braided locks struck the enemy with the shining sword so that she cut through half of his neck, such that he lay unconscious, drunk and wounded. He was not dead yet, not entirely lifeless. The courageous woman struck the heathen hound energetically once more so that his head rolled forward onto the floor. The foul body lay behind, dead. The spirit departed, bound by punishments, cruelly imprisoned in hellfire. Judith had won illustrious glory in the battle as God Lord of heaven had seen to it when he gave her victory. Then Judith took the warrior's head, all bloody, and placed it in a sack into which her attendant, an excellent handmaiden, had brought food for them both. Then Judith took it all gory and put it into the hands of her thoughtful servant to carry home. 